Hi, I'm Maggie Weldon for Maggie's Crochet, and this Sparkle Mesh Clutch Pattern video is sponsored by Premier Yarns. In the video, I use Premier Eversoft in color off-white and City Life color golden. One layer is worked in Eversoft, and one layer is worked in City Life. The layers are sewn together and unite, the united piece is folded and stitched into this clutch. To finish, you add a snap and a button. And Premier Eversoft is a number four light worsted weight yarn. And it comes in 45 beautiful colors, solids and multis. And it's 100% acrylic yarn. And it's about a three ounce skein. And it's about two and a half um, ounces for the multi colors. Premier City Life is a number five bulky weight yarn that comes in 13 colors. So the possibilities are endless in mixing and matching these two yarns. The yarn, this yarn adds a touch of sparkle to any project. So this is a perfect clutch to take uh, for a night on the town and the skill level is intermediate and it, it actually is a little bit easier than intermediate. And the fi finished measurement is 7 inches wide and 4 inches tall, which is 18 by 10 centimeters. In addition to yarn, you will also need a yarn needle, matching th sewing thread, and one, 1 inch or 2.5 centimeter button, and a quarter inch snap. The links to everything that you see me use in the video are listed below, and let's get started on this lesson. So here's a close-up of the Sparkle Mesh Clutch. And this one was worked with the solid background color of Woodpile. And that was done in the Everyday uh, Worsted Weight Yarn. And this top color is actually the Premier Yarns City Life. And that was done in Hostas. And this... Um, Yarn here, I'm going to substitute the Eversoft in soft white. And then for the City Life, I'm going to use Golden. So this, um, what I'm going to show you how to do is a solid piece and a matching size City Life piece. And then you get, if you could imagine this being opened also, so there'd be like three sections here. And when you get the two sections together, then you sew the outer edge and then you fold this up and stitch along here. And then you put your little snap and a button on and that's how easy it is. So this is adorable. So you start out with a G hook or whatever, no, an H hook or whatever hook you need to match gauge. And then you chain 27 with your main color. And then you just single crochet in the second chain from hook and in each chain across. So when you get done with row one of the base, it's called the base layer, you're going to have 26 single crochets. And the links to everything that you see me use here are listed um, below this video. And I'm using the Deborah Norville crochet hook which is very warm and light in my hands. It's very nice to use. Okay, so I'm down at the end. Okay, so now just at the end of row one, you just chain one and turn. Let me get this out of the way here. Chain one and turn and you turn like the page of a book like that 
and then you just single crochet in each single crochet across. So you continue like this until your piece is 11 inches from the beginning. So you'll be measuring from here out and you stop when it's 11 inches. And then after you reach the 11 inches you uh, finish off. So that's how you do the base layer. So now let me show you how to do the over the top layer. To do the top layer, you chain 27 with the City Life now, and you double crochet in the fifth chain from hook. So you count one, two, three, four, and five, and you go right in here. And then you chain one, you skip one chain, so I'll skip that one right there, and you go into the next chain. Chain one, skip the next chain, go into the next one. Chain one, skip the next chain, go into the next chain. Chain one, skip one chain, go into the next one. So you continue doing the same thing all the way across this row, row one. You should have 12 boxes when you get done at the end of this row. You might want to do an extra because these squares are hard to find and you might want to chain a couple extra at the beginning and then when you get down to the end as long as you have your 12 boxes you can al always uh, cut those two extra or a couple extra chains off at the end. You just have to unravel it a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to count my 12 boxes. So I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. Just need one more. So there's my 12. So your first row should look something like that. And I'm going to chain 4 and turn. And you turn like the page of a book. And I'm going to work, I'm going to skip my first double crochet and now I'm just working in the chain one spaces. So I'm going to double crochet in the chain one space and chain one all the way across. It doesn't get much easier than this. It's really fast when you can work into your chain spaces. So every row is just like this. So continue working your pattern like this until it measures 11 inches from this beginning chain. And you'll be measuring from here over to here. And it should uh, match up with your other piece and be 11 inches long. So go ahead and work on that and I'll come back on camera when I have my piece done. Now I have my base layer complete and my overlay layer and I've matched them up with the wrong side of my base layer facing the wrong side of my overlay and now the instructions say to sew these two layers together around the outside edge using a needle and thread but you can also use a um, the yarn from the base layer which is what I've done here and um, what how you do that is when you finish off your base layer just leave a super long end and then you can use that to sew around the outside edge 
So that's it, what I did, but I, um, when I sewed it, I went from, I started from here, I went down here, across here, and here, and then I ran out. So I thought I would show you how to add on a second piece of yarn to finish sewing this um, around. So I've, when I do this, I want to use uh, my T-pins here to pin this where I want it, especially when you're starting around the beginning sides. But I'm going to pin this and I want it to kind of overlap the base layer like this and I'm going to pin it across the top of a row here. Just two pins is enough. I'm going to go like that and like that. So I've got it pinned where I'm going to sew it. And then right here, before this corner, I'm going to take my corner pin out now. So before this corner, I ran out right here. So I'm going to go on this side of it here. And I want my yarn to come out like right here. So I'm going to go behind it here, about an inch and a half, and bring my needle into where I want my yarn to start. So I'm going to go like this in between the stitches, like that. It's all getting bunched up here. Alright, right there. I just have to be real careful not to bring that end all the way through there. And I'm going to bring it right to there. And then I'm going to hold it like this. I'm pinching it on both sides. And then I'm going to do another little stitch over where it came out, just to lock it in place. And then I'll do that one more time, just to make sure it doesn't come out. Okay, there. So now that new yarn is there. Now I need to attach my overlay to my base layer at the corner. So what I'm going to do is go right here. This is where my yarn came out here. And I'm going to hold that to the, match that to the corner and I want to hold it overlapped a little bit. So I need to go here first. And I'm coming from the back from the base layer to the overlay layer. Okay, so the trick here is not to go all the way over here because then that strand will show. Wherever I came out, I want to go back in really close to where I came out, but not in that exact space. So I'm going to go just a little tiny bit over right here and down through the base layer like that. And then that stitch won't show. It'll be like invisible. See right there, you can see it just a tiny bit, but okay, so then when I come back up, I want to come back up. I don't want this to show either, so I'm going to go through my stitching here and back out to the other side. Like that, so you don't see that. And then same thing, I'm going to go just a little tiny bit to the right of or to this side of where I came out and now I'm ready to go into the corner so I'm going to come up from under underneath I'm going to come up in the corner and then I'm going to grab the top layer also right there like that all right so I've got my corner there I'm going to do one more little stitch around the corner to lock that in like that. I'm coming up from the base layer to the overlay. Like that. Okay. Now I'm going to come. I do most of this from the right side once I get it going. Okay. So I'm going to come up from the back. I want this to be sticking out over the edge here. And I go into each, the top of each row now along the sides. Okay, then I'm going to grab just 
I'm going to go to this side over that one little strand there. I'm going to pull this down for the next one. And I've, I've got my needle running between the stitches. I don't have it like fully open back here like this. I'm not doing this. Underneath I'm, I'm going between the stitches like that. And then I'm coming back up the top of that row. Like that. And then I'm going to pull this down so it is over the edge. I want my overlay to be on top of the white. I don't want my I don't want it to be like this. I want it, the overlay to be sticking out. So I came out here. I'm going to go back a little bit. I'm going between if you look on the side I'm going between the stitches through the bulk of the stitches and then I'm coming back out the next row right there and then I'm going back I'm going from this side down and then I'm going in between the uh, I'm working on my needle is in the base layer right now and then it's coming up in the top of the next row right there okay now I'm gonna go to this side just a little bit of where I came out and I'm sliding my needle through the stitches underneath and I'm coming back up in the next row. Right there. Now if you have a needle and thread you could just um, pin these and just whip stitch it on the side like totally from the side like this and you won't see the um, the stitches. And then I'm coming, I'm going a little bit to that side of where I came out, and then I'm going through the bulk of the under um, of the base layer, and then I'm coming to the overlay like that. So you just continue around like that until the all the sides are sewn together. So your overlay will be completely attached to your base layer like that and then all these pins will be out and then what you want to do is fold this see this right here is the finished one so you're going to fold this up like this and you're going to sew these sides right here and then when you fold it over like this that's how you make your purse and then you just sew a button right here and then on the underside is a snap and then the receiving snap part is down there like that so that's how you make the sparkle mesh crochet clutch I want to thank you very much for watching and all the links to everything that you saw me use in this video are listed below